I talk with my hands a lot. I hope. Oh, you are That's fine. fine. <laughs> it's just that you don't want my hand yes, in your yes, shot. Yes, yes, um, yeah. That is, yeah, that is totally fine. I will do my best to not fidget. Gotta get like a stress ball or yeah. like... one of those little fidget cube things yeah, that has there you little, go. little widgets. My name's Elise Mack. I'm a Williams Grad Art 2020 alum. I use she, her pronouns. And we are in beautiful Tower Grove Park, which is my neighborhood. Uh, I love Tower Grove Park because it really feels like a community park. There's tons to do, tons of pavilions, playgrounds. You see families, young people, older people. It really feels like a beautiful, beautiful place to be with a cross section of St. Louisans. Oh, hobbies I've picked up. Well, I've always been a really big fan of cooking and baking. Um, and you know, pandemic was really about that. I did get a sourdough starter. It is on hold now, um, but we actually just made some chocolate eclairs over the weekend um, to celebrate the holiday and just eat something tasty. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favorite thing you've made over the past year? Ooh, uh, my birthday was recently. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> um, I made myself a chocolate orange Earl Grey tea cake, uh, and that was pretty divine. That, that sounds delicious. Uh, I, I similarly got into baking over the pandemic, and so I managed to get my roommate addicted to a clementine cake, which was also very, very good. Um, I, can, I can show you the recipe. I was just gonna <laughs> ask if you might. Because <laughs> it is delicious. Um, and I've, I've even had Juan try it out, and he has barred me from ever bringing it back to the office. So uh, it's, it's all right. Uh, <laughs> I am uh, very grateful to be the executive director of Bread and Roses Missouri. It's an organization that works at the intersections of art and social justice. Uh, and I've always been really passionate both about the arts sort of in all forms and especially visual art, but also climate justice. Um, and Bread and Roses works to bring working people the opportunity to participate in the arts, um, as well as children who might not have access to high quality arts education through their schools uh, and also works to bring uh, social justice issues to the forefront of the art that we produce. So um, we have three interconnecting programs. One's our youth initiative where we bring the intersection of social justice and the arts to city recreation centers which serve mostly black youth and then uh, faith-based summer camps that serve mostly immigrant and refugee families and um, brings them through art making, both the empowerment that comes with I made something uh, and the vocabulary and the tools to be agents for social change in their communities. So they know that social change is all around them, um, but we are hoping to bring the vocabulary and the tools, like what's a petition, what's a strike? If I hear someone say like, we're boycotting this company, what does that mean? But also a sense of pride over the community let's create a mural that shows all of my favorite things about the neighborhood and the community or create a mandala that shows all of my favorite things about myself um, that's one component of bread and roses <laughs> we also have uh, the workers opera project which brings uh, performance opportunities to working class folks uh, and then also some more professionalized theater productions we're about to release our first podcast um, about the lives of working folks in St. Louis. Um, it's actually called Mrs. Palmer's Honey. It's an adaptation of a 1946 novel about a black maid in St. Louis who organizes um, in the face of the post-World War II workers' rights expansion movements. Um, and we work with both professional actors to bring more social justice oriented theater to wider audiences and work with working class folks to help through our process the, the social change movement that's happening all around us. Things like voter rights and access, expanding Medicaid and Medicare, uh, through performance with folks who might not have the time in their career or daily lives to participate in the arts. That was a lot. <laughs> and you asked me a very complicated question that I feel like I didn't get to all parts of it. Um, I mean, I think I think that's perfect. Um, oh, great. Because, okay. Yeah. I mean, it is it is a lot of work, and I, I think I think what's especially 
interesting about it is how community focused it is. A lot of what we've been sort of talking about um, in this project is how people engage with their local community mm -hmm. and your work is kind of that that instigator of change amongst the community itself to sort of be that 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 voice to to begin creating uh, action um, and so that work is super cool. Uh, and I moved back to St. Louis during the pandemic, so it was pretty difficult to feel connected to the community um, when we we're all so isolated. But um, I also wanted to come back to St. Louis with somewhat fresh eyes. Um, when I left, I was a high school student, so the problems that I thought were affecting the community then are a lot different from the issues that I hear my community members telling me about now. So trying to be more connected to liberation for all, prison abolition, um, a wide range of racial justice issues, and um, just trying to listen to folks as much as possible. Um, obviously I'm really invested in the arts, so going to see performances when they come back <laughs> in person, but um, also, you know, the pandemic has encouraged people to be doing things in new, different and creative ways. So there's been a lot more outdoor music in St. Louis than there has been in the past. Um, people gathering in places like Tower Grove Park to you know, play kickball every week or um, simply walking around, seeing folks that we know. Um, St. Louis, as I was telling you a little earlier, is known for having sort of big city amenities with a small town vibe. So it's really um, easy to go anywhere in the city full stop, but especially um, if you want to see someone, you just have to sort of get out and about and run into something that you know. Feels a lot like the Purple Valley in that way. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. Uh, that's that's really cool. And I, I think I think getting new perspective as you enter spaces or, or re-enter spaces is, is really important and impactful for creating, you know, any type of change and really bringing new light to a lot of the challenges that can come from certain spaces. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure St. Louis is lucky to have you back. Oh, that's sweet <laughs> of you to say. <laughs> I think something I really enjoyed during, you know, I only got two years. Some of y'all get four and we in grad art only get the two, but um, just the supreme convenience of accessing the outdoors really like informed my choice to come back and live in Tower Grove. Like, five minutes walking from this incredible outdoor space, but also encouraged me to look at what was nearby outdoors wise to St. Louis. I was never a big hiker outdoors person uh, in high school, but when I moved back, I realized, oh, you know, like those places that my family went camping growing up, like sure, we went for the weekend and, and it was fun to like stay in a tent by lake, but also I can like go out there on the weekends on my own, even though I'm living in the city and, and really see what, what the outdoors has to offer here. Coming back to it again with new eyes, um, I think really was thanks to the Purple Valley, my time there. <laughs> I similarly have hiked a lot while in Williams and mm. I've had four times the amount of time you've had and can say it's always like, it's always <laughs> a new perspective. So being able to visit any of those spaces is, is always, fun and a true treat just because it like you're a different person every time you visit it and that, that means a lot yeah well and also thanks to williams i was prepared with snow gear when we had a full week of sub-zero temperatures and i think six inches of snow which i know is not a lot by williamstown standards but it was really shutting things down here so, so that sounds like a lot for st louis it was a lot for st louis <laughs> yeah i mean climate change <laughs> So I really will confess my deepest, dorkiest soul to you here. Um, Dungeons and Dragons podcasts really bring me joy. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Adventure Zone. I'm a big fan of the Campaign podcast. Uh, and I actually, um, to tie again back into Williams, played my first D&D campaign while I was at Williams. Um, so big ups to... Uh, my friends in the class of 2019 who let me join their table and now have fueled this whole joyful part of my uh, <laughs> my existence in St. Louis and beyond, I hope. <laughs>
That's so cool. I, I personally have never played Dungeons & Dragons. My friends and I tried to once, and it seemed like so much fun, but none of us had any idea what we were doing, and so it was complete chaos. <laughs> um, and then we like were just like, this this is not for us because no one understands what's happening. Um, it takes so much commitment. Games take a long time. Yeah. Yep. Um, but that is super cool. I... <laughs> <laughs> I've always been interested in Dungeons and Dragons. So hearing you talk about how, how awesome that is, and I, I think I started listening to it might have been Drunks and Dragons, mm -hmm. um, just as like a, a curiosity because I was like, I've always thought this was fun. This seems like a cool way to sort of get into it, um, <laughs> and it seems like so much fun. <laughs> it's awesome. I love the way that role playing like lets you sort of build the world that you don't get to live in your everyday life, and I think that that like aspect of it is uh being struggled with on some of the podcasts that i'm listening to mm. but um in the games that i've played with folks sort of in real life have been areas where it like opens up whole conversations about like why isn't the world that we live in working in this way that you know goes beyond like well we can't do magic <laughs> um yeah yeah I think my thank you note would have to go to, um, this is a good question. You prepped me for it and I still am like, oh, there's so many. <laughs> Cause I do love writing handwritten thank you notes. So I'm like, um, well, I recently learned that Coretta Scott King was a singer and performer um, and that she used the arts as a way to further her activism. And I think that that model is something that Bread and, Bread and Roses owes a lot to, and that I in my life really um, am continuing to struggle to find balance between. Um, the arts are something that we, or I personally, take a lot of refuge in and, and use as a space to sort of heal and sometimes forget about the really like intense issues that we're experiencing and, and the change that I want to fight for. It's, it's hard to do that work all the time. The arts offer us a place where we can sit back and say, like, look, this is what's beautiful in our world and in each other. Um, and her combination of singing and performing and bringing what is good and beautiful about ourselves and each other and the movement to that space is something that I think uh, I think about a lot. Uh, and I really admire and aspire to. So that's that's who I think my thank you note would go to. Thank you so much, Lisa. That's that's beautiful. Um, and there there are so many different themes throughout this whole conversation, from like you know what it means to be a part of a community, to come back, um, mm -hmm. sort of new perspectives that you gain, um, and just a lot of that sense of instilling community engagement in, in other people. Um, so thank you for all of that. I'm sure it'll be a lot of stuff for us to sort of think about and unpack as we begin mm -hmm. doing our blog posts and stuff. Is there any, are there any last things you'd like to share with people? Thank you both. I mean, y'all have been on quite a journey already and I understand you're only uh, <laughs> about a week in. So um, thank you for expanding what community means for, uh, for Williams. And for me. We, we've had so many people on our social media be like, how do we get this hat? And we're like, it's not for sale. It's not for sale, no. Um, 